The good news is we aren't hearing about a great deal of issues, so if you just keep your head down and are being careful, you should be okay avoiding the majority of cases. It's been called the next pandemic, although it's much too early to assess. Still, nobody wants to rule it out. While government says relax, there's nothing to worry about. We received an announcement from government officials a few minutes ago that announced shelters were being installed to contain the influx of sick and begin to get ahead of the outbreak with treatments to help those affected outside regular circles. And there's no charge, so those without the funds, such as the homeless, the most impacted by the pandemic, can seek help without fear of repercussions. At current, a drug known as xylazine has been the catalyst and has changed a terrible drug into something much more devastating that is currently impacting various cities and towns throughout the U.S. New York State has now reported that they are assessing cases in the western part of the state and there is already expressed concern from states like Connecticut, Massachusetts, and very other middle states that with concerns about a slow expanse across the U.S. in a way that the doctors and scientists cannot thoroughly understand. The CDC wasn't clear on any answers, but did assume that the heat wave we're currently experiencing could have effects on the clear spread, indicating that climate change could be a part of this pandemic. They failed to elaborate further. This has started a wave of political activists and politicians that have warned against that this could be a direct result of climate change, creating a climate where illnesses can be more powerful, spread further and faster. But on a whole, the scientific community did not comment. This could be more because the current outbreak has taken up serious resources to combat. In short, there are bigger concerns now when an entire city may be locked down than the emission standards that it creates. While government officials continue to say things are safe and well taken care of, a different thinking seems to be permeating Congress as lawmakers are passing laws that tell a completely different story. We'll now vote for the Homeland Preparedness Bill. I'm sorry, this section is classified. Funding for first responder personnel would be doubled if said attack leads to more than 80% of national population being affected by classified. This funding shall commence in conjunction with large-scale outbreak of classified. Civilian and military units shall be trained in containment and combat of classified, with possibility of classified flesh-eating in such event as classified escape or otherwise become uncontrollable due to their otherworldly strengths. Should event occur in urban areas, Jesus, that, that's classified, far surpassing our darkest nightmares, should casualties uh, exceed classified body disposal actions. Concerns over vigilant activity is still high. The Guardian Angel, what some call a patriotic militant organization with possible ties to white nationalism, were turned away by the government in multiple states when they attempted to volunteer their services. This hasn't stopped their leader who said in a statement that they see the issues on the cover-up and intend to go wherever they are needed to stop the spread of this illness. No further statements were made, so it's not clear what their intentions are, but officials say that such actions taken independently serve only to hamper the work of first responders and volunteer workers in civil defense that are actually working to clear this up as soon as possible. In most of the U.S., it's been business as usual. The election remains at the forefront of the conversation and discussion on what these current events will play in debates is still up in the air. News around the world continues to come in. India just suffered their worst power outage in world history. 620 million people are currently without power. The last major outage they had was in 2001 and it's believed that some form of parasitic draw caused the issue and dropped their power levels to below 9%. We do have a report from the street, so let's head over there now. Hey everybody, I'm here in the streets of Philadelphia and what normally would be a busy street is almost silent. Stores that would service the community are mostly locked with metal grates. A few convenience stores are open and standing almost oblivious to the plight that has struck the city. Others would peer out of their windows to check to see what we were doing and I 
wonder if they were looking to see if we were going to be attacked. We can hear some sirens off in the distance and an occasional police vehicle drives by, one even warning us of the danger, but on the whole there's only been pockets of activity. Usually these areas would have homeless sheltered here, but few have maintained their stay. Those we had returned had no idea that anything was even happening, even though police have said they were advising them to leave the area and find shelter. We needed to keep moving, so we passed along the advisory and went on our way. Even with the warning, the local shelter has been completely empty. The lady that operates the location called it eerily silent. They normally fill their location up with those in need before the afternoon looking for a meal of any kind and others stay on seeking a place to stay for the night. Normally they would be forced to turn some people away but today she couldn't she could count the people who arrived on one hand. We have seen those affected by the illness, some being taken away in stretchers after being attacked and others standing like statues only to venture toward our van as we stopped to film. Patches of what we hope is not blood were seen in many areas of the city. If I'm being completely honest, I don't feel safe anywhere. Your skin crawls here like being in a, a damp dark basement. You just feel like any moment that something is going to run out and attack you. I'm keeping the van door within arm's reach and we set up our chutes inside the vehicle. It seems if we stay inside and quiet, we don't draw any attention, which is the plan that we currently have. Of the attacks we have seen or heard described, they were, were explained as clawing and biting, that the attackers looked like ravenous animals, insatiable. We were told one man was attacked while he was sleeping under one of the numerous bridge supports. We were told that there is little to no chance they expected him to make it. The attacker simply wandered off after the assault. No police arrived, no ambulance, nothing. Civil Defense has set up a shelter in the area, but very few arrived at the shelters. When we arrived, the shelter was completely empty, and we were told we couldn't stay due to the danger. A few beds looked to have had signs of once holding a sick person and one resident responding on the case of an anonymity stated that some had come and been released cleared of any signs. There was an ominous truck that we were told to stay away from that said it had supplies but it appeared to be stacked with body bags six or seven high. These shelters are also made to assist the sick who were feeling ill or worried that they had been affected but it appears that they didn't have much work to do to combat the illness overall. Concerns have been raised that the sick may be unwilling or unable to report to these shelters, and then some have said that compelling sick individuals to leave their house may be a requirement. Back to you. After contacting local officials, it's been clear that not all sick individuals are reporting to these shelters. We've heard New York officials have already considered legislation that would make harboring sick individuals illegal. And this kind of heavy-handed action is what we can continue to expect if people don't take action now. Atlanta has canceled sessions their legal departments and questions of what steps will be taken next are worrying local citizens. Pittsburgh, on the other hand, has stayed the course on the activities they have seen. Although the things seem to be increasing in frequency, the overall reach has been that the city is safe and secure for now. Checkpoints have been set up both in the city proper and throughout the state as the governor has taken action to support and contain the area. This hasn't stopped locals from volunteering their services to assist with the sick. Chicago has just announced that it is taking preemptive actions to screen members of the community from sickness and had considered going door to door. While some pundits have urged restraint in these difficult times and believe these reactive measures like this may be too much, too soon, and could have dire results. In a shocking statement made by the mayor of Atlanta, he stated that people should feel safe in their homes, but that it is not always in their job to protect them once they leave their front porch. Under heavy scrutiny, he stated that it's impossible for public safety individuals to take responsibility for every single citizen, and this may be a great time to exercise some personal responsibility. We wonder if that thinking hasn't permeated into other mayors and governors throughout the country. We're sure they would deny that at this time, but 
down the road, once things get worse, could that all change? Are we on our own once this thing moves in? Can it be stopped? Stay tuned to this channel for more to find out.